Hello, my name is David Zinadi. I'm an orthodontist practicing in Beverly Hills, California for the past 28 years. I've been doing 3D printing at the office for about five years and have been involved with uh, Spintray and its products for about two years. Currently, we're using two iTero scanners at the office, including the latest uh, Element 5 and a CareStream CS3600. At any time, I usually have about 200 clear aligner cases. As a member of Sprintray community, I've noticed some doctors uh, sometimes have some problems printing the models and also having a fit issue with uh, clear aligners or retainers. I'm hoping that through this video, I can share some of my experiences avoiding complications and giving you some tips in making retainers and aligners and 3D models. I'm excited to share with you my clear aligner workflow. We start the process by making sure that we have a very good and in, uh, accurate intraoral scan. It pays to be very picky at this point. Uh, what I usually do is have my patients brush and floss to make sure there's no food particles between the teeth. And I usually have a air and water syringe handy plus a Q-tip to make sure there's no saliva accumulation in the, in the proximal area. We want to make sure that we get at least about 10 millimeters of uh, gingival tissue as possible including the frenum, any areas of gum recession, and all the interproximal areas. Why this step is very important because later on you will see that it would help us not have any fit issues with our aligners or retainers. At this point, we want to log into the iTero website and download our STL files. If you're printing the models for retainers using Sprintray software, what I usually do is to import or export actually the, uh, the models with teeth facing up. And if they're going to be used for making aligners using what I usually use myself, Orchestrate 3D, or sending it to a lab like uh, ULAP or RCAT, then the teeth are going to be in occlusion. So we're going to take our SDL file and drop it onto the railway. We're going to make a base. So we're going to blow up the model here and click on fix. That's going to give us a base. And this model have, happens to have a curve of speed, which I want to get rid of. I'm going to show you how and why. Now we have a base. And if you look at this model, you see how the, uh, the back teeth, the second molar especially, are on a higher plane than the anterior teeth. And then when you do a thermoplastic suck down, there's going to be a difference in the thickness of the plastic from the anterior to the posterior teeth. That's what we don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt this model with the front teeth up. And the next thing I'm going to do is do a plane cut. And we're going to say OK to that. Now the model is sitting on the built platform. And if you take a look, the anterior and posterior is on the same occlusal plane. This next model, if you take a look at the anterior area, Right underneath the uh, central incisors, there's a gingival undercut. I'm going to blow that up so you can see that better. If the model is left at this height, when you make the thermoplastic material, you're going to get the plastic material getting cut underneath this area. And then when you want to remove it, it's going to be very hard. Either you're going to crack the, the retainer or liners, or you're going to cause distortion in the plastic. So what we're going to do here is do another plane cut. and then move the cutting plane right where the uh, undercut area ends. And if you take a look, now we're ready for print. Before we're ready to print our models, we want to make sure the glass underneath the resin tank is totally clean. It doesn't have any dust or fingerprints. And what I'm going to show you is also when we put the resin tank on top here, we want to make sure we don't touch the bottom of the resin tank. And the next step is to make sure also your build plate is totally clean before we start the printing. 
Next crucial step is removing the model from the platform. You want to hold the build plate down like this. And I like to engage the models for removal from the posterior area. Basically what I do, I just feel my way. I don't want to torque the models to, to cause distortion because that's going to cause problems in the fit. And I'm just going to go back and forth between the right and left until the model drops. This next part is actually my favorite. Um, what we're going to do is put the model in the Pro Wash. Before this, we used to use two different alcohol baths and you know shake the models in there, and it was it was a messy thing to do. And this is so convenient because you know the cycle is about 10 minutes. All you have to do is just put the model in there, close the door, and then start your wash. And you come back in about 10 minutes, and everything is done. The next step is to put the model through the Procure. This is a very simple step. Just make sure you have the right settings on there. Most of the time I use um, Model 10 2. We have four models here for you. The first one is an ideal model that the base is cut to exactly 15 millimeters from the incisal edge. The second one is a periodontal case that has a lot of gum recession. The third one is a missing tooth case. And the fourth one is anterior spacing case. This is our perio case. And if you look close up, you'll see we have a lot of uh, interproximal uh, recession here. And what we're trying to avoid is to make sure when we make the uh, thermoplastic material on there, we don't get caught underneath those uh, undercuts. Otherwise, it's going to be impossible to remove the, the plastic from the model. Now we're going to fill in those spaces with our blockout resin. And this is a flowable material, so it's really easy to get in there. We're going to cure the resin. Just showing you on the part of the model, but you're gonna go through the model, do the whole thing on the buckle and lingual. This is our uh, missing tooth case, and we're gonna do the same thing. Basically, we're blocking the undercuts on the mesial and distal of uh, the adjacent teeth to make sure our plastic does not catch those corners. And we're ready to cure. And our last case is the spacing case, and we're, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fill in the interproximal spaces. To make the plastic removal much easier. And you just in this case, you have to be careful you don't overfill that space. Okay, we're ready for our next step, which is the vacuum uh, forming machine. I like to use this machine through format from Essex. It's a wonderful machine that everything is automated. All you have to do is just do a barcode scan and the machine sets up the parameters for you automatically. Another great uh, machine is from Great Lake Biostars um, um, that uh, I know a lot of orthodontists use. But what I don't recommend is using an over-the-counter uh, um, uh, uh, suck down machine because what happens is a lot of times you end up either overheating or underheating the plastic and it's going to affect the feel of the uh, aligners or retainers. I recommend using a uh, spray, a vegetable oil, oil spray, to make sure your plastic does not get stuck to your model for ease of removal. Now we're ready to make our appliance. OK, 
Okay, the next step, you see the aligner is made and we have a beautiful fit. We're ready to make a cut on the uh, plastic. At this point, we're going to use a hot knife to go around the margins where we want to have our final cut. And we like to also use a fume extractor so we don't smell the burning plastic. When separating the uh, plastic, you gotta make sure you don't torque the plastic and distort it. And now we're gonna go to our final step and cut the plastic to the exact height and contour that we want. Our liner is ready, and then we're gonna do the final smoothing using a fine sandpaper. When we finish the liner, we're gonna sterilize it, bag it, and deliver it to the patient. Now, the beauty of this system is if I do a D-band in the morning, scan the patient, I can deliver the retainers the same afternoon. And if, even if I'm doing aligners, I can do the same thing with having a spin tray printer. It, it gives me the option of uh, scanning, uh, doing the treatment planning on the Orchestra, Orchestra 3D uh, software, and then deliver one, two, or three aligners in the afternoon. I hope that you found this video informational and helpful. Thank you for watching.